One of the most common fears I hear expressed in terms of interpersonal communication is, uh, is some level of social anxiety, of fearing the person that you might be talking to. And I want to address that here. I think it's important that we have the ability to develop a skill of assertiveness and to be able to kind of stake our own claim to be ourselves within the relationships that we're in. And most of that anxiety comes across from some level of, uh, of intimidation. <laughs> I put up this uh, image here. This is one that I use in my training for law enforcement in terms of uh, viewing nonverbal expressions here. And this is certainly a very intimidating uh, pose. The, uh, the, the photographer on this, um, his name is Saeed, he um, released the shutter um, right after he, at the time he released the shutter, the lion made this face. The lion was not making this face before he took the photograph. And of course he was able to realize that he was in imminent danger and uh, was able to flee, he was able to get away from uh, this menacing face. But uh, that's uh, quite intimidating there. Um, I also learned that this face is quite intimidating. This is my own, which is interesting because I never really have the intent uh, or the agenda to come off as intimidating. And maybe you don't um, see this as intimidating. That's a good thing. Oh, the point that I want to make here with this is um, I'm intimidated. We all are. We might have power differences that are happening uh, for some reason. Um, regardless of the context that I've been in, from being a filmmaker to being a, uh, a teacher, if somebody has uh, a, a power level above me, even somebody that I've known for years, and if just by the structure of our department we come together and now they're the dean or something that way, it's a little weird. That, and um, and I have a little bit of anxiety going through and talking to them. So, even though I might be intimidating at the same time, I also experience some level of anxiety. And there are approaches that are out there. One in particular that I uh, make um, in terms of being able to be more assertive, and that's this concept of what's called systematic desensitization. I don't even know if I've said that right. I can barely say it. Systematic desensitization. There we go. So um, what this is, is really a getting used to something and to do that systematically or methodically. So if I were to go through and establish a timeline here, and over the course of time, we were to become more desensitized to the anxiety that we're feeling, there are certain um, stops along the way, certain things that we need to do along the way um, to get us to uh, reduce the anxiety and to become more assertive within um, our relationships. Uh, and that all depends on the relationship as well. There are some relationships in which you uh, um, experience anxiety that uh, might need just to be terminated. You need to go through and, and uh, decide, you know, what good is that relationship. If that relationship is a significant other and it's one in which you're being abused, uh, and as a result you suffer that level of anxiety, then... Um, it's time to terminate the relationship. We'll talk about uh, that a lot more as we get into relational stages. Um, I just want to put that out there too. What's the value of the relationship? That's uh, one of the main things we need to consider here in terms of whether or not we want to go through this whole systematic desensitization as it is. Well, the first step here is uh, to go through and deal with our proximity to this individual. Just spend some time with them. For example, I'll use my dad here. Um, he's since passed away, but he was a guy that I experienced a lot of anxiety with. M many of us do. You know, it might be your boss, it might be me, it might be uh, uh, another professor, it might be your significant other, whatever. And in my approach to uh, lessening my anxiety with my father was to spend more time with him. And not, you know, to get into any um, conversations necessarily, or it's just to, just to be in the same room maybe to watch a ball game or something, or uh, to do a barbecue, or whatever the case might be. We just, I would spend more time with him and, get, and be more used to being uh, within his proximity. And then within that, um, we would get into surface conversations that might deal with uh, football or baseball, or that might deal with uh, the weather. The weather is always the uh, number one surface conversation that seems safe for anybody to get into. And while it might seem trite or maybe even patronizing, it still adds to that FaceTime that you're getting there, okay? 
we can move beyond surface and get into maybe uh, some kind of content level stuff, which is like the sports I was talking about. We might talk about a home improvement or working on the cars or whatever. But over the course of, of these these three intersections along this timeline, um, I, I'm becoming more desensitized to the anxiety that I feel just by being close to him. Okay, And then eventually... Once I feel comfortable enough to go through this, and I might go through this a number of times, proximity, and then in a surface conversation, and in a content conversation, I can graduate maybe into something that's more relational. Oh, let's, let's get back into the nostalgia of the family, or remember that time I came to you for advice, or would you help me with this situation now? Where, or how do I, I, how do I feel about you? You know, I'm, I, now that we spend more time, I'm, I, I love you now, and I'm feeling maybe comfortable enough to get to this point, to where I need to ask you this question. So this, like I said, is systemic, or systemic, it's systematic, there's a difference there, it's systematic, where we go through this often enough to where we get to the point to where we need to ask that question. That question might be with your boss in terms of, of needing a raise. That question might be with your professor in terms of why did you give me a D on this uh, assignment? I want to know why. The question might be, are, are you seeing somebody behind my back? Right? These are all critical relational questions. And if we're experiencing some level of anxiety, we're not, gonna, we're not going to ask those questions. Anger certainly can get us to that point, but then really we're out of emotional control and it's not going to go very well. So this, this concept of systematic desensitization, there we go, um, where you start, small and you and you work into habitually you work into something that gets you to the point of taking that that psychomotor approach we're going to do something about it um, works and it works well this is uh, common in therapeutic circles as well in terms of overcoming fear that way some other ideas that go along with this whole concept of uh, of becoming better uh, becoming more assertive one is to manage your emotions. This comes from the, uh, the humanistic and pragmatic models of communication. People have a tendency maybe to be put off by somebody who does not have those emotional controls in place. And if we need to come off assertive, we need to show that we have the ability to control what we're feeling in terms of expressing that. Um, the assertive individual is an active listener as well. They have the ability to go through and engage verbally and non-verbally. There they encourage disclosure from the other individual. This becomes very pragmatic in terms of that um, effective model of interpersonal communication where they're making sure that a channel is opening enough to go through and have disclosure come from the other side. That assertiveness breeds assertiveness on the other side. I need to find some gratitude. The assertive individual uh, is appreciative. They have the ability to go through and, and say, I'm, I'm really grateful for you to take the time for you to be with me today, or I appreciate how you might be feeling. And they also take responsibility, responsibility for the conversation. I'm willing to go through and say that, okay, that's taking some level of um, responsibility for your feelings in the situation, your opinion in the situation, your standpoint for what's going on. And lastly is this uh, concept of uh, equality. Um, we talked about this in the humanistic model in terms of eliminating should and ought statements. Um, the assertive individual looks at other people as equals. The aggressive individual looks at other people as subordinate. And it's important to understand the, the differences there with what's going on. So the question that I have for you, and uh, you don't need to put this in your, uh, in, this won't be a discussion question because I want to respect your privacy, but I do want you to post about this in Canvas to where we can discuss this a little bit because we're going to come back to this individual. And the question is, with whom do you experience some level of, uh, of communicative anxiety? Who makes you nervous? I want you to write their name down and then I want you to go through and write why. What is it about them that makes you feel that way? All right? I look forward to reading your responses.